What's going on, everybody? And welcome back to the second episode of Ask the Money Badger, where I'm going to ask her answer any kind of questions you guys have. Um, we'll have a little discussion about some of the things that maybe have been boggling your mind, um, some things that maybe have happened over the last week or so that uh, you know make you kind of raise your eyebrows, scratch your head a little bit. I also got a list of questions from the hive mind uh, that they kind of wanted answers. So we'll have a discussion about those things as well. So we've got 10 people so far here. Uh, if you guys want, feel free to hop over on YouTube. Um, if you're not already in the hive mind on Facebook, feel free to go ahead and subscribe over there. We'll get you in. And um, there's a link where you can be on the show and ask a question live. Time did I start? We just started. So we had literally just started. Just give it a few more minutes, letting everybody kind of settle in. All right. Can you shut that door, please? Yeah, I just want to get my shot back in the fridge. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Caitlin, is she okay? Liam, can you shut that door, please? Can you guys shut the door, please? That's fine. Shut the door. Yes. The door is still open. What's going on? Looks like we've got Cindy from the high line, so I'm going to bring her in. going on Castro Castro not a whole lot man also if you guys are on YouTube I can post your actual question on the screen now so I'm trying something a little bit new um, when did you when you list with Excel list do you put your price at the buy box generally speaking when I list on Excel list I do put the price at the buy box uh, just because that's the price I'm aiming for anyway there is a couple of exceptions. Um, so if the um, if the book is a fast mover and I anticipate that there's going to be a lot of action uh, up or down, maybe I'll price it a little high. So if the book is ranked uh, something like I don't know, ten or twenty thousand or less, uh, then generally speaking, I'll price it a little higher. Cindy, are you there? I am here. I don't know if y'all can hear me or not. We can hear you, but I can't see you. Oh, lost you. All right. Uh, but, 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 but. How am I doing? I'm doing great. So we got Big Ben with a question. If I were to source 700 to 1,000 books a week like yourself, uh, will I bring in money badger like money? So a lot of the money that we bring in on um, on Amazon, we've, we've built that inventory up. Uh, over the last year and a half. Uh, so just be patient. Uh, you will find that the more books you have in inventory, the more you have the ability to sell. So if you would imagine that you have 100 million customers and you have one book available, um, what are the, what's the likelihood that the 100 million customers are going to purchase the one book? Whereas if you had 3,000 different books you know, to offer or 5,000 different books to offer, you know, your likelihood drastically increases that you're going to sell those books. Great question, though. Hopefully that helps. Uh, one of the groups we've got from, or one of the questions we've got from the Facebook is from Cindy, who we just lost. Uh, general pricing process, although uh, what to do with the price of the book, um, but it's not a label. Oh, the price on the book, but it's not a label. So we just erase any kind of handwritten pricing that's on the inside of the cover. Uh, if there's a pricing sticker that tells you kind of like what the, the book was at one point, uh, if it's a big sticker, I generally try not to worry about it. Like a lot of the big Barnes and Noble ones that will cover like the whole corner of the front page of the cover, then we don't really worry about those. But um, little ones like Goodwill stickers, we we'll take those off. Little mom and pop stickers, we take those off as well. Uh, looks like we've got quite a few people over here on TikTok. 
Uh, so let me try to get a couple questions from there as well, guys. I'm going to do my best to get all these questions. If I don't see it, feel free to please just type it again. I'll do my best to get to you. Um, can you do a one-on-one -on -one teaching? Um, I'm kind of pressed, like, for time. Uh, however, I can do my best. So if you want, you can shoot me in, you know, shoot me a DM, and I'll see if I can do any kind of one-on-one -on -one coaching with you. Um, let's see. Are you holding costs, including the FBA fees, in the scanning app? Um, so when you scan with Scout IQ, it breaks down what the potential fees are for that book. Uh, it also breaks down what your potential buy cost is because you can also alter that. Um, something else that it also calculates is shipping as an estimation. If you're doing fulfillment by Amazon, then you know it tries to calculate at 25 or 35 cents a pound. Uh, however, if you're going to do like merchant fulfilled starting out, you can also go in there and you can estimate you know, if you think it'll be $3 or $5 to ship the book or whatever, and it'll give you a, a, a breakdown inside that profit menu. Uh, next question. Let's see. Pedro, uh, can you do a walkthrough on textbooks? Can you talk about what is good and what is acceptable? Uh, so Amazon is great in that they've got Seller University. And what that does is it gives you a bunch of videos that you can watch. Uh, they also have their guidelines. If you go in Google, a lot of the answers you're going to find are on Google, which is why it kind of irks me when you see a lot of these like $1,000 courses. Um, if you go through Google and you, you just search for Amazon book condition notes, uh, it'll give you a breakdown of what acceptable is and what um, and what uh, like good is. Let me see one second. I want to see if I can share my screen. See what we can do. Bear with me, guys. We'll do a Google search real quick and we'll see exactly what they are Amazon book condition. You guys can probably hear my kids killing each other in the next room. It's the glory of having boys. Okay, guys, you ready? Let's see if I can share this. So, boom, boom, boom. All right, so if you guys are on, there we go. You guys see that? So here are the guidelines for books on Amazon. This is what they consider to be good, acceptable, new, um, used, very good. You can see used good says all pages and cover are intact, so you can't have a rip in the cover. You can't have any kind of major damage that's structural to the book, including the dust jacket if applicable. So if you're missing a dust jacket, you're looking at an automatic downgrade to acceptable, guys. Um, spine may show signs of wear. Pages may include limited notes and highlighting uh, and may include from the library of labels or discard labels. Um, shrink wrap, dust covers, box sets may be missing. Um, item may be in bundled media. So maybe you're missing a CD. Maybe you're missing uh, the box that the book goes into if it's a box set. Acceptable. Yeah, it says dust jacket as well. Uh, acceptable it says all pages and the cover are intact, but shrink wrap, dust covers, dust jackets, box set casing may be missing. There's also limited notes and highlighting in the margins, uh, maybe minor water damage, but the text is still readable. So if you guys have like rippled pages in your books, um, if you have rippled pages in your books, you could still send it in as acceptable. Now you're going to want to make a, ju dug a judgment call on that. You know, the last thing you want to do is send a book in that you're not comfortable selling and have a bad review come back. Uh, so always use, you know, err on the side of caution. We always like to under-promise, over-deliver. Uh, if you want, I'll put this in the notes of the video for after the live is over. Uh, but it's, it literally it was just a super easy Google search, guys. I hope that helped. Um, next question I'll take from the Facebook group. Uh, we've got... 
can you do a walkthrough on textbooks? Uh, so that was the second part of that question. So the walkthrough on textbooks, specifically, what are you looking for with textbooks? Generally speaking, we don't take the big like white stickers off of the back um, when you're doing a textbook. Also, you want to stay away from high ranked textbooks because they're just not going to get any better. You know, once they reach that three, five, six million sales rank, they're just not going to get any better. Cindy, I'm going to try to bring you in again. Let's see if uh, we can't get this to connect this time. And while we're doing that, let's go to the next question. So what's the best place to find large sources of books? An example would be like a Gaylord from my location. Are there websites, auction sites? I have seen Reezy buy a ton. Uh, I'm just wondering. So it's a great question. The longer you're in the business, the more you build these relationships. And when you build those relationships, you'll get connections uh, that may allow you to purchase bulk. Uh, typically, there are um, some websites, or you can get them on like Facebook or Craigslist, but you want to be wary about that. And you always want to see if you can get into that Gaylord, maybe scan a few books. I very rarely you know, hear of people having a great experience when they buy books sight unseen. Um, but yeah, you can go to like um, thrift stores, like mom and pop thrift stores. Perhaps guys, they uh, you have too many books in the back to deal with. You can start by trying to get backroom access. Uh, somebody that used to preach that really strongly was Romer the Romer. Um, he had a lot of success doing that. Uh, but the whole idea of getting backroom access, guys, is that you're going to have access to books that haven't been scanned by anybody yet, in theory, because they're not on the shelf yet. So if you all get a chance, try to get some backroom access. From there, maybe develop a relationship and see if you can get Gaylords. Let's take a question from TikTok. Uh, what if you get a hit uh, and they have more than one book? Should I buy all of them? So if it's a hit and it's a good hit, absolutely. You know, I would always. So when we are sourcing, sometimes we'll run into, like, there's an example. We were at the Goodwill Outlets, and uh, we found a, a bin that had, like, 20 or 30 of the same, um, like, study Bible. And it was like a $30 profit book. So we gathered as many as we possibly could. Um, there was other people there, so we couldn't get all of them. But we ended up getting like 20 of them. Um, and they just, they carried us through April. You know, they, they was just, you, you guaranteed to sell two or three of those a day. So whenever you see a good book, um, grab it. You know, and if there's a multiple copies of that same book, yes, you want to grab as many of them as you possibly can. It's a good question. Uh, what's the best way to save on shipping to FBA? So when you ship to FBA, you're actually getting a discount, uh, especially if you purchase your shipping through Amazon's website, uh, because you're going to get their partner pricing. You know, so for instance, when I send a box of books, if it's um, if it's about thirty pounds, it's probably going to be about eight dollars to ship. If it's going to be forty to forty-five pounds, and you're looking at like the ten to twelve dollar range, because um, you're using what's called media mail, and with media mail. You get a discounted rate because it's a book or a CD or a DVD. Um, so if you're gonna if you're gonna use the post office, you get that media mail rate. But we use um, Amazon to purchase our shipping. So we use UPS as our preferred carrier. The guy does a lot of good work for us. Uh, he's always very thorough. He's on time. He calls when he's not going to be there, you know, at a recommended time. Uh, and you know that's that's why over the last couple of weeks I've been asking, you know. What do you guys tip the drivers? Because this guy does a lot of work for us. All right. Next question. Um, here's another one. So I came across this a few times since starting. Uh, when I initially scanned the books, they were green. And then when I scanned again a few days later, they were no longer profitable. We, we still run into this issue all the time for us. Um, and as you uh, get more experience doing this, I think that that starts to come down as the number of times that it happens. However, books sell, and you may find that you overlooked um, that there was only like one uh, used FBA offer, and it sold, and it was 5 or $6 more than the lowest or the most comparable merchant fulfilled price. But now since there's no used buy box, 
you know, you're going to default to that lower price and it's going to look like it's not profitable. It may still be profitable, but this is the importance of subscribing to like Keepa.com or Camel, Camel, Camel or any of those websites that gives you that information of sales history. But it still happens to us all the time. Uh, don't let it get you down. Let's see if I can take another one from the Facebook group. I'll just ping pong all over the place here, guys. Um, let's see. So I listed all books in good condition. This is from Gretchen Hale. She's in our hive mind. Uh, I listed all books as good condition. I don't know. It's got to be something with my Acceler List account. I guess you're having a hard time. Uh, so if you're listing something and it's giving you a hard time because there's a red R, you're restricted. So that means Amazon hasn't approved you to sell that particular book, uh, in which case um, I encourage you to check out Reezy.biz. Uh, he's the consignment uh, business that I work with. Uh, Reezy Resales has been in the industry for almost two decades. Uh, really good reputation amongst book resellers. Uh, but he splits it 49-51. So you get 51%, he gets 49%. Um, so I would strongly encourage you to check that out. Uh, let's see. TikTok, how are you guys doing? You guys hear me okay? Is the video good? Uh, so this comes from TikTok. Examine Baseball says, what level of sales do you recommend having before buying Scout IQ, Keepa, etc.? So um, I view Scout IQ as kind of a requirement. Uh, you can't really find a book that's profitable unless you have the right information in front of you. So I would get Scout IQ first and foremost uh, when you're setting up your Amazon account. Uh, to do a live lookup and get it cheaper for $14 a month, you need to have the professional account. This is something that I wasn't aware of a long time ago. Maybe they changed it, but here recently I'm seeing a lot of people uh, say that Scout IQ is giving them a hard time setting up. So I would strongly recommend Scout IQ uh, a cheap scanner. It doesn't have to be the EOYO. If you've got something that you found cheaper, all that is a Bluetooth remote that's going to type everything into the Scout IQ app for you, so you don't have to type in everything or use your camera. If you don't have a scanner right away, uh, then you're definitely going to want to get Scout IQ. Um, you're going to want to get Accelerless sooner rather than later, but you can always you know, do that down the road. We pieced everything together one by one. Uh, Mary Jarvis 143 on TikTok says, how do I price my books? So when I list everything, my wife lists everything in Exceller list. We always aim for that buy box price, which is the used buy box. Um, if it's a new book, you want to aim for the new buy box. Uh, you do want to make sure that if you're listing something new that you're abiding by Amazon's guidelines. You don't want to sell something that's not new and then have it come back and haunt you. Um, if it's a fast-moving book that's maybe ten or 20000 in sales rank, something that's going to move, maybe we'll price it a dollar higher than the buy box, try to squeeze a little bit extra out. Uh, next question is from Mark Tuss. How do you submit uh, a lot of books all at once on Amazon and wants me to do one at a time? So on Amazon, it's kind of finicky. I've got a video on how to list books into one batch uh, on my YouTube channel. Feel free to check that out. Um, but you want to basically list your first book. It creates the batch. Stop before you like figure out where they want you to send it. You want to go back to the very beginning, and then on, like a second or third screen. You have to forgive me if I'm wrong. If it's the second or third screen, um, there's a drop down. You want to add to an existing shipment, and then that you want to proceed forward. Does it have hazardous material? Does it have a battery? That sort of thing. That's really what makes listing books on Amazon directly on their website a little more challenging than if you're using like a listing software. Rob Santiago, I'm going to try to get you in. I believe Rob's from our Hive Mind group as well. Hopefully he can get in. Cindy had a couple of uh, attempts. Sorry we couldn't get you in. Hopefully next time. Uh, I'll take another question. You have a question about settings on Scout IQ. So the great thing about my settings on Scout IQ is it's the default settings. Uh, when Caleb Roth uh, put together Scout IQ and put those price triggers in there, uh, they're pretty accurate. You can mess around with them if you want. I'll just have you guys know that I use um, the default settings. Uh, we're very happy with it. Um, my wife and I, we haven't really found anything we would want to change. So use the default settings. 
uh, but you can mess around with them if you want. Now, of course, with Scout IQ, you have the ability to add people to your team. Uh, and when you do that, um, you know, you want to set up, you know, price triggers for them. So you want to increase the buy cost maybe for them or you want to build some extra padding in there so that, you know, whatever they're looking for is guaranteed to be profitable if you have an employee, you know. Good question. Good question. Um, Cindy, let's see if we can get your question answered. Uh, what would you do uh, if there's a price listed on the actual book, but we list it as a different price on Amazon? Does that cause issues with clients? No, it's a used book. So odds are it's going to have a different price than what it was originally launched at. So I would say no, it's not going to cause any issues. Um, I haven't really found any kind of problems. I haven't yet to have anybody leave a comment and you know say hey uh, I got the book for twelve dollars and it was you know marked fifteen you know or had a sticker on it for four dollars you know like it just doesn't happen I haven't seen it yet not to mention or not to say that it won't happen but we just haven't had that issue hopefully that helps Cindy uh, here's another question let's see Dell says there's an Amazon distribution center being built literally half a mile away. Does this make the difference uh, in my cost to ship to them? So it very well could. Uh, with you being as close to a fulfillment center as you are, there's a good chance you guys will have your shipment sent to that closest fulfillment center. That's not guaranteed, though, unless you pay for something called inventory placement, where Amazon will take an additional fee uh, on top of the normal shipping costs for you to determine which fulfillment center you want to send that inventory to. Uh, I will say that we have all of our books. Well, most of our books go to Memphis, uh, which is only a few hours away from us. Uh, there is a Chattanooga uh, fulfillment center, which is much closer. Uh, so there's a good chance, but like I said, it's not guaranteed. BB5308, how are you doing? How's everybody over on TikTok? Try to get you guys a couple questions answered over here. Um, so, how long does FBA shipment usually take to become fully received? So, here, like since the pandemic, we've noticed this take a little longer. It used to take a day and a half to two days uh, after it's been delivered. Uh, here lately, it's been taking every bit of a week, sometimes a week and a half. I think this last time we sent in a bunch of books and we didn't get them checked in for like six days or something like that. They still have uh, like 180 books to check in. Uh, Twisted 3D Cracker says, if Amazon doesn't have a listed book, then what? So if Amazon doesn't have a listing for the book, then you're going to want to check eBay. You're going to try to sell it on um, OfferUp or Mercari. Is there a way to create a listing? You could try to create a listing. I don't have any experience with doing that, but you can call into Amazon, see if you can do that. Uh, you're probably going to want to talk to the catalog team. That's the team that's in charge of managing Amazon's entire catalog. So if you have any issues with like a specific listing uh, to where it's giving you an error, that's the good team to reach out to. Generally speaking, the seller central, um, like seller support level one, is a team that you're, you're very rarely going to want to explain in depth what your entire issue is. You're going to want to see if you can get either escalated to a, like a tier two or maybe a supervisor, somebody that, you know, has a little bit more vested interest of, you know, your account being happy and well-maintained. Justin Garrett, how long does it take to be used buy box eligible? So that's different for each account. Usually I want to say like two weeks to 30 days, uh, but you want to get a certain number of transactions under your belt. And for each account, it's different. There's no, you know, set formula. Uh, that's just like, Nobody knows the best way to get ungated in categories other than with an invoice or nobody knows, you know, how to actually get the buy box. And if anybody's telling you that they know exactly how to get the buy box, they're lying to you because nobody knows. Amazon keeps that very, very like tight lipped. Let's see. Here's another question for you guys. So I ran into the book. We're into a book today. Uh, can you give me your thoughts? Profit on FBA was two sixty six eighty five. However, no used buy box, new buy box, or Amazon price. Um, e score was twelve. The rank was one point eight million. So it's got a double digit e score. It's got a twelve e score. It's got a sales rank of one point eight million. I mean, this is why Keepa is so important because you don't know if that book sold 
um, you know, 12 times in the first part of the year, or if it's been selling like every other week, or if it's an accurate price. Because don't forget, guys, you can list books for whatever you want. If you wanted to list a book for a thousand dollars, you could do that. You might get kicked back for a high pricing error, but just because it's listed for two sixty-five doesn't mean that's what it sells for. It could very well be selling all day long, or at least twelve times a year, at like twenty-five dollars. So you want to keep that in mind, guys. Um, here's another one. Uh, so if you have the same book but the cover is different, you still sell it? Yes. Um, Steph and I were actually just talking about this yesterday, where if you have a book and the cover art is different, list that in your condition note. Cover art may vary. I don't know, but Amazon's you may want to double check. Always err on the side of caution. Double check with Amazon's policy. Talk to somebody if you can. Um, but I mean, in my opinion, the the book is still the book. If it's the same ISBN, and it's like a novel, then it's got to be the same, right? If if it's a textbook. And it's an international edition, or if it's a student edition, or a teacher's edition, or you know, there's like some of these textbooks are like economy editions, so they may have different information. It's got to be the exact same edition. It's got to be the exact same edition for you to be able to sell it. Can't be the instructor's edition or anything like that. Uh, can't find barcode scanner as small as yours. Can you please tell us where you got yours? Yeah, sure thing, Kaifu. So the the barcode scanner that I use. It's made by EOYO, um, and it's called the EOYO 3. Um, don't get all bent out of shape when you're looking for it, and you can't find the EOYO 3D uh, because the EOYO 2D and the 1D come before that. Uh, but this is an EOYO 3-in-1. It's on Amazon. Just search for EOYO 3. It'll pop right up. Thanks for the help in there, hive mind. I love you guys. Uh, so the next question I'm going to take from the uh, Facebook group here, guys. Do you use a custom SKU? Uh, Chris Hyde wants to know. Yes, we use a custom SKU. Um, we can build that SKU because we use listing software. Uh, we use Acceler List, and in our SKU, we put the date that we listed it, uh, the sales rank at the time that we listed it. So if the book is a 1.8 million, for example, when we list it, and it doesn't sell until two months from now, but now the sales rank is 2.5 million. Then we know that it probably didn't sell often, but if the, you know, when the book sells, it's a 500,000 rank. Then we know we missed a couple of opportunities with that buy box. So it's a good way to monitor how efficiently your repricer is working or how how accurately you're you're picking up books. So we use our date that we listed, the sales rank, um, the price that we listed it at, the condition that we listed it at, so good, acceptable, whatever. And then, of course, the number of the book in that batch. So if it's the 31st book in that batch, then, you know, it'll have that number there as well. It's all stuff that we use inside uh, back of house. That way we can track our inventory a little bit better that way. Um, I couldn't hear you, what you said about what to use to see what the books, the sales on the books, like I mentioned. Yeah, okay, so... Um, Keepa.com, um, like keepa.com, uh, or Camel, Camel, Camel. Um, these are both sites that will allow you to have um, Amazon sales history for like 12 months. Um, I'm not sure, but I think you could pay a little bit more than 17 a month on Keepa to get more in-depth information uh, and go back further. Um, but 12 months is fine for us. We don't We don't worry too much about it. Um, Pedro wants to know, so what if you scan a book and it pops up on Excel list with a different picture, uh, but everything else is accurate about the book, what do you do? So that's what we were just talking about, where the cover art could be different. Um, you want to make sure that you're picking the listing on Amazon that matches your book. Uh, but if the cover art is different, you may want to contact customer service. It's a, a seller central with Amazon. And just verify that even though the cover art is different, you can still sell that book. You want to be very wary on whether or not it's a textbook, though, you know, because you want to make sure that that edition, you know, matches what you're trying to sell. You don't want to sell Harry ba Harry Potter hardcover with the the pastel dust jacket, but you actually listed it under a soft cover. You know, you want to make sure it's the right one. Good question. Uh, so, do you recommend using buy shipping on Seller Central for merchant fulfilled orders? 
uh, yeah, we buy shipping uh, whenever something Merchant Fulfilled sells. We go into the order and we buy the shipping directly through Amazon. The reason we do that is because we're able to use our balance, which we usually have a pretty big balance waiting for disbursements to pay for that shipping. So we don't actually come out of pocket extra on that. That's a great thing about doing about this. Putting the tracking information that's true. Yeah. So that's another point too, uh, is when you purchase the shipping through Amazon on a merchant fulfilled order, you don't have to enter additional tracking information because it already has all that information and plugs it in for you. You just have to print the label out and you can save it as a PDF. If you don't have a printer, take it to like uh, office max or something like that and print it out there. Something that's really popular that a lot of people in the hive mind are talking about. Hold on, hold on, guys. No fighting. Okay, I'll pay. I'll deal with it. Go sit down. Listen, go with your food. Did you get your plate? Um, something that a lot of people are talking about in the hive mind, guys, is that you can rent a printer. You can rent a printer from UPS for about two two dollars a week, but you get free labels. It's a thermal printer, so it doesn't use ink. Um, and then the labels are free. They they come with that. But it's two dollars a week or something like that. So I mean, it's not a perfect solution long term, but it'll definitely get you what you're looking to get um, starting up. You know, it makes your life a little easier that way. And two dollars a week, um, if you're paying Amazon to label your books, it's a savings. You know, because if you're sending in forty books, you're already past that. Um, how do you do sets? So Chase Hampton. In the Facebook group, in the hive mind, asks, "How do you do sets like book one through three, step by step? Uh, do you put them in their own box? Do they get one sticker barcode, barcode, or will Amazon just know their three books uh, and goes to the customer room straight from the purchase?" Yeah. Hold on. Get out. Why is it wrong? Get, I need to get through. Both of you, go. I just can't hear you for a living. Shut the door, please. You guys are running in and out and fighting, and I'm live right now. I'm just getting curious. All right, where were we, guys? Um, yes, we have a custom SKU. We answered that. In the Amazon seller account, after I did my first batch, uh, I'm now listed in eight other countries. What did I do and how do I remove those? And it looks like I'll pay monthly for those. So, yeah, you want to make sure you contact sell, uh, seller support, Gretchen, and see if you can remove those other country marketplaces uh, if you're not going to use those because you don't want to end up paying for something that you're not going to use, if that makes any sense. Yeah, parent life for real. Romer, thanks for stopping in, man. I appreciate you saying that. If you guys haven't had a chance yet, uh, Romer's trying to grow his channel over on TikTok. Uh, feel free to check him out. He does a ton of business, but he does it all through consignment. So he actually doesn't go out hunting for books anymore. He has people send him textbooks and he sells it for him 50 50. So give him a shout. Check him out. Um, I know Facebook Marketplace is free. Yeah, Facebook Marketplace is free. It's a great place to get free books, guys. If you haven't, um, stop by and check it out. Romer, you keep up the hustle, man. I'm growing that. He's done something like 800000 in sales um, in the last like year or something like that. Uh, Pedro, another great question. So what's the best way to remove a difficult sticker? So a lot of people swear by Scotty peelers, uh, but my wife and I, we don't care for Scotty peelers that much because they tend to leave divots in the book. They'll bend. They, they cause more damage in some cases than they're worth. So um, if you've got a hair dryer, use a hair dryer on the sticker. It should loosen up the glue. You can use your fingernail. Uh, but something dull. You don't want to use anything metal or sharp that can slice the book. You don't want to rip the, the dust jacket or dig into the cover. You want to kind of preserve the condition of those books as best as possible. How are you guys doing over here on TikTok? Wheezy Pants, you're looking at about $1,700. Nice. 1700 bucks profit for a shipment's not bad. Hopefully... Hopefully everything sells quickly for you. Uh, how do you decide to do 
FBA versus FBM. So um, there's a lot of books, guys. If you're doing Fulfilled by Amazon and you find that there's not a book that's profitable for um, FBA, consider scanning it and then clicking on the very top of Scout IQ and switch that to Fulfilled by Merchant. Sometimes you'll find that you're surprised and the book is profitable if you mail it out to the customer yourself. Um, the way I decide, though, is if the book it has enough profit that makes it worth keeping in my house and then going to the post office separately to mail it out, if that makes sense. I don't want to sit on a book. The whole reason I do fulfillment by Amazon is because I don't have to hold on to the book. I process the shipment. I send it off to Amazon, uh, and that, that that's where it sits until it sells. Amazon handles everything else. So uh, if the profit's worth it and you don't have another way of monetizing that book, uh, then feel free. Uh, Lano, the only percentage of Merchant Fulfilled books that I have left are what I listed in like late March, early April. Uh, so whatever's left, maybe 60 books, 50 books. And I've got them in a hope chest and they haven't moved since. And I sell one every couple of weeks. So uh, how many books is that taking, Wheezy? Yeah, Rut Row Scooby asks, uh, how many books is that 1,700? I'm curious to find out too. Uh, no, it's not seven to nine dollars. Um, you know, that's not, not like a range. But if it's if it's a book that's seven to nine dollars profit for you, and you think that that's acceptable for you to hold on to that book, and then you want to mail it out to the customer yourself when it sells, rather than paying for storage fees, then you go right ahead. Um, it's all up to your business. Uh, how much does it cost to ship a book on average, Daniela? Um, Daniela Viles, ten twenty one wants to know. So. Um, to ship a book, you're using media mail, uh, two to three dollars, depending on how heavy the book is. It might be maybe four dollars if it's a heavy book. Are you an Amazon seller? Yes, I am, Jose. Yes, I am. Uh, Chase, if your Amazon account says nine marketplaces as well, you may want to talk to Seller Central just to make sure that you're not subscribed to something. Um, different because I can sell uh, in the US Canada and Mexico and I'm working on other countries but I'm not gonna pull the trigger until I have either a product that I want to sell over there or I've got some kind of distribution that I can just have them sent to a warehouse in that country uh, but you don't want to pay for something that you can't use um, so Brendan Wilson you want to know do you have, by chance have any examples of qualities of books that you put as good very good acceptable uh, and what you wouldn't accept hmm yeah Give me just a second and I'll get some together hold that thought Brendan my wife's going to try to track a couple down and we'll show you in the meantime how's everybody doing over here on TikTok good video still good I'm not using my hotspot so uh, is there a fee? Fee for what? There, there are fees. They come, fees come out of each transaction, so there are fees. Uh, you fill out a W-9 when you start. No, you don't fill out a W-9 when you start selling on Amazon. Amazon will give you, I think it's a 1099K, uh, but they give you some form of like a 1099 at the end of the year. If you've sold more than 20000 um, like $20,000 in sales and or... Uh, like a certain number of transactions. I want to say it's 200 transactions. Uh, so if you've done 200 sales uh, and 20,000, then they give you that document. You pay taxes. You're supposed to pay taxes on everything you sell anyway, guys. Um, but that makes it official. Let's see. So back to how we do sets of books. <coughs> we use poly bags. Um, and they're clear. They have suffocation warnings on them. Um, generally speaking, we usually put a sticker that says this is a set ready to ship. Do not separate. Do not separate. It's in a poly bag. And then we put the FN SKU, the label that would be for the book or the listing, on the outside of the poly bag just so that it's not against Amazon's terms. They can read that. They can scan it and check it in and out if they have to. Um, but everything's in the poly bag, so you don't you, a lot less likelihood that something's going to get separated. Um, let's see. 
Yeah, so a lot of the questions you guys have about like starting up and taxes and things like that, um, a lot of it has changed with how they have you guys set up your accounts. Like it isn't the same as it was when I started. And I've only started like a year and a half ago. But Amazon's always changing things. So, for instance, on your Seller Central um, login website, like you normally it would say, like, if you had a book, you can match the buy box price. Now it doesn't say that. It says, like, match preferred featured price or something like that. So I think they're rebranding the buy box. Uh, but hold, hold on to your butts. There's going to be a lot of changes soon, guys. Amazon's known to, to change things often. And, you know, change is the only consistency. All right. Not acceptable. We wouldn't accept So that we've thing. got this book, right? It's a good looking book, except for, I don't know if you guys can see this. So it looks yeah. like in the Gaylord or in the box, at the something bin, something chewed. Snack. Something chewed the edge. Of the book so this is not acceptable we would not sell this book it's a dud um, not even going to take it to like the bookstore to try to monetize because it's who's going to want that it's garbage this book is also not acceptable this is a great textbook it's like a twenty dollar winner right you scan it it's great awesome except there's a hole right here near the spine on the cover see, finger through it, that'll really accentuate it. see my finger can't, can't sell it unacceptable Right? See that right there? That's the title page on the other side. This so is unacceptable. Also unacceptable? I mean, now, technically, we say this is unacceptable, but we just read that this is considered acceptable by Amazon standards. So, whereas I like to under promise, over deliver, so does my wife. Um, we definitely are little, conservative when we're. You see how there's a little bit of rippling on the pages for minor water damage? You can see it more so on the other end here. I'll pull it around. For it you. doesn't impede how the book opens. Well, but the pages are sticking together a little bit, as you right. can see. Yeah. So it's kind of gross, right? You can see there's rippling there. Definite signs of water damage. You can see right there. So that would be unacceptable. Unacceptable. This is a book that we would list as acceptable. It's got some wear on the corners, it's a little dirty. I may clean it up a little bit before I send it in, depending on you know how much it's listed for. Um, but overall, this would be an acceptable condition. Here you go. So this is the book that we're talking about. Uh, you can see that there's some wear and tear on the corners. It's a little rough. The spine is good. But overall, I'd say that's acceptable. You know, I wouldn't mark it as good because when a customer gets that book, um, you want them to be like, wow, that's very good. That's not good. It's better than I expected. And here's a book we would list as good. This is a good example of good. No signs of water damage. Very the minimal spines are good. on the edges, on the corners. See the corner, very minimal. But this is also a book we would list as good. And if you flip through, there's no writing, um, there's no highlighting. And this is what? That's another book that we would list as good. It's in much better condition, yeah. but it goes right back to that. So this is a this is technically very level. good condition. I think it's the pages, brand new, but pages look great, right? I didn't buy it new, so pages look great. No writing. It still creaks when you open it, but we list it as good. Customer gets this book, and it's very good, but it's listed as good. They're going to be like, oh, wow, it's better than what I expected, and that's really what you want out of things. Um, see if I can get Lano in here. Patty, I agree. Thanks for the input. Yeah, I, I think that um, all the basic stuff that we take for granted on a day-to-day -day basis, um, some of the new people that are just getting started, they don't have that luxury because they don't know that information yet. So 
We're trying to break it down as simple as we possibly no. can. No. So this is a book that would be unacceptable because of the edge, but I'm going to see if I can so recondition this, it a little bit if you want to show. We talked to you guys um, last week about sanding blocks and how sometimes you can clean up the book. Um, so it's not mold. It's just grime, right? So maybe you take a sanding block and maybe you can clean it up. You're not shaving the book. The pages are still going to line up. You know, the pages are still going to line up. Lano, for some reason, you're not uh, you're not loading in. Um, see, there's a little bit of grime there. And we'll see if we can clean that up with like a, a sanding block. And you can get this. It's a 3M sanding block. You get it in any kind of paint section. And we use the fine, mm -hmm. the or, 220 extra fine grit so that we don't damage the book at all. And it doesn't always work. Um, some books still end up being a dead, but sometimes it's worth taking a little bit of a risk on. No, I don't have the inverted filter over here on TikTok. It's not 550. It's 220. So 220 grit. It's a 220 grit. And we don't do it all the time, but it helps. You know, we try. What's going on, bud? How you doing? How are, good, man. How are you? Good. Can you hear me? I can indeed. Welcome on the show. How you doing? Thanks, man. I'm well, man. How's your night? How's your night tonight? Well, pretty good. Pretty good. Nice low key night. We listed a little bit. Um, just hanging out. Kids are more rambunctious than we are. I heard one of them uh, basically said they need help with a freaking jam in the back earlier. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it sounded like. I swear. Yeah, you never know what's going to come out of their mouths. Yeah, it's been bloody murder. Apparently, one of them flipped each other off. So. That's what happens when you have five kids that are in the house with each other all the time. No. What are the age range for those? Um, this, my oldest just turned 15. My youngest is almost two. So. Wow. That's the yeah. whole gamut. The whole gamut. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Everyone likes to say, you know, you know how that happens, right? But. We love kids. Sex. Sex is how it happens. I love kids. He loves me. That's how it really goes. Uh, yeah. It's a win-win. So what are you snacking on over there? It looked like salami. It was the end of it, yeah. It was very much the end of it. How'd you get You were coming after my tube meat fetish? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm a sucker for it. Me and Anthony Bourdain. So are you uh, sourcing tomorrow, pressing tomorrow, taking tomorrow off? No, we're uh, taking tomorrow off, uh, probably probably till Wednesday. He's taking tomorrow nice. off on listing. Yeah. Cool. Well, we switch off the listing, so she's going to list tomorrow. I'm probably going to take tomorrow off. Um, but, you know, we're trying to get the house ready to sell, pick up an RV so we can travel. So we've got to get the house ready to sell so we can do that. That's awesome. And yeah, the hardest thing in the business right now is like life, work life balance. You know, you get so wrapped up in mm -hmm. trying to list all the time and source all the time that, you know, some of your responsibilities start to go by the wayside. There's nothing I can do about it. Got to balance. Yep. How about you? Uh, tomorrow is uh, the thrift store in my neighborhood. They do half off books tomorrow. So I hit the posh, posh slash rural ones really hard. Nice. You do that every weekend? Yeah, on Sundays. Nice. Uh, my last haul was $70, and it was, you know, paperbacks are 50 cents, hardbacks are 75 Yeah, when you say $70, a lot of people, like, don't really realize what that means. But mm -hmm. $70 at 50 cents means it's a pretty good haul. <laughs> yeah, it was. I haven't, I haven't put it all in yet. That'll be probably Monday or Tuesday. But nice. Yeah, Welcome. plus whatever I get tomorrow. How many books you have in inventory now? Uh, down to 24. I haven't sourced since February. Wow. Sales yeah. still rolling in or they started to trickle? They're trickling. But uh, the yeah. last one was uh, an old massage therapy textbook for $38, which I'll take all day long. All day long. Yeah. Massage therapy, crystals, essential oils. We love those books. I've got one book that right now um, I'll fish it out. It's uh, a niche dirt track a uh, racing one that's it's fifty dollars in profit. I picked it up for seventy five cents. Wow. Yeah, I'll go fish it out. I'll be back. 
All right. So guys, um, you guys remember how dirty this grime was on the side of the book? So as you can see, like that sanding block really takes a lot of that out. So now I would have no problem sending this book in. That's acceptable. That's acceptable, of course. It's not going to be great, but so you guys can see as well. That's all just a 220. You know, it didn't shave the book down or anything. But basically, she just separates the cover. Yeah, make sure you pull the cover away so you don't accidentally yeah. spit it. Yeah. Let's see. Get a question or two while we're waiting. Uh, we've got. I'm going to mute you real quick, okay? All right. Let's see. Brendan Wilson says, Thank you for showing that. I've been sending in lower quality than I should. Yeah, so you definitely want to make sure that you're not cutting into your own possible profit. Last thing you want to do is sell it and then have to resell it or sell it, and then you can't sell it and you get a refund and a bad review or any mix of that. So always err on the side of caution, guys. I mean, and just because that's like the lower end of the quality, we're willing to take doesn't mean that it doesn't meet Amazon's guidelines. We're just very conservative with our books too. So... Just because you're sending in something that's not quite the same quality doesn't mean you're doing the wrong thing. I agree. What about books that do not have a book cover or a dust jacket? So I think we covered that a little bit earlier. Um, if you don't have a dust jacket, you may want to list it as acceptable just because it's missing it. So according to Amazon standards, you got to have that as an acceptable type condition. Back with us, man? Yeah. This. So this is what I picked up. Little mighty midgets. Nice. And it's a 78. Yeah, it's just an illustrated history of midget auto racing. And good quality it's, book. it's decent. It's a hardback. It's got the cover. It's torn a little bit here and here. And yeah. I think this might this might be residual smoke damage from a smoker's house. Yeah. So this will go acceptable, but what's the profit on that? Yeah, quick easy fifty dollars. It'll sell. Yeah. It's still like one point two million. Yeah. So let me ask you this. Um yeah, we, we found that it's about a month per million sales rank over a million. Are you finding that pretty accurate, or do you say that's something different? Um, a lot of my stuff's generally under a million if it isn't um, if it isn't really profitable like this, uh, just because I don't have a lot of the capital to start up with to yeah. have sit, still have sit, have stuff sit. So. Okay. Yeah, at first we, we used to get real nervous anything over a million at all you know 1.2 we were like uh, you know but you start experimenting and you start finding that it sells pretty quickly you know sometimes yeah. you're willing to take my a general rule i'm probably don't go over four right now yeah i think we probably wouldn't buy over four yeah. either uh just because like once it's that high, it's in my mind. It seems like it'd be really hard to get it back below three or two or into a normal range again. Yeah. So the profit really has to be there for the long term, long tail books. Exactly. Yeah, and that's the little racing book. I mean, it's a, it's a niche market, and it's going to be one of the ones that uh, once somebody sees it, that it's available, they'll grab it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And to be honest, a book like that, if I didn't pick it up, I know probably would have just landed in the trash somewhere. That bumps me out. <laughs> we have a couple of friends at the outlets that we visit with, and uh, one of the things they like to do is like stop. It's like they feel like they're the last guard between them and the dump. Yeah. So. And they're not half wrong. Yeah. Not half wrong at all. Especially some of those old valuable like Civil War books and turn of the century books too. Mm -hmm. What's going on, Polly? Thanks for stopping in, man. How you doing? Did you guys get that listing issue fixed up? 
Lano, thanks for stopping in, man. You got any questions? You. you got any, uh, any tips or tricks for any of the newcomers? How long no, I guess I, I do have one, I guess, word of advice coming off of your uh, your discussion about rank, uh, how you rate your books. Because I've had yeah. one good book that was 30 years old. It's a, a Jaeger book. <clears throat> and I thought it was in good condition. And I even listed the the dust cover, or not the dust cover, but just the front jacket. It's a little tiny paper book. Right. Um, I listed that it was torn, and I got a bad review. I got a one-star review over an $8 book, $8 paperback wow. 30 years ago. Yeah. And I just found this out yesterday. <clears throat> so undervalue what you sell. Yeah. It's going to take you three reviews that are five-star to cancel out that one. Mm-hmm. It's a shame. Did you try to do the auto removal? I just I just found it yesterday. So I this is my first bad review that I'm gonna have to chase down. So. Uh, hopefully it removes. I mean I don't I don't know exactly what it says in the review, but that's that's a shame. It really is. Yep. That's what it is. You know, I thought it was a uh, good with the asterisk of for being a thirty year old book. It wasn't the case. Yeah. It's not a good book. Yeah. Can't play the asterisk. Yeah, you can't play the asterisks. And no matter what you put in your condition note, they're still not going to read it. <laughs> yep. So, lesson learned. Yeah. But hey, uh, keep doing you, man. How long have you been doing this? Uh, since I saw you in January on TikTok. So you're, you're not too old. You're, you're, you've been doing it for, what, eight months? Seven. Well, Seth, considering you've been I've been doing it in February, you said. So. Exactly. Is it really shut down where you are? Where are you at? In Idaho. Uh, it's probably not shut down in Idaho, right? It's not, but uh, my mother lives with me. She yeah. has CPD. Right. I'm an asthmatic. She's almost 80. Yeah. I yeah. just, you know, yeah. I'll play it safe. No, we, we took a Absolutely. really long time yeah. off, too, and we're really hyper cautious when we go out sourcing now. We don't go anywhere without masks and gloves. And like we have a little one, and I won't even hold her until I get home and yeah. take a shower. It's not worth the risk. No. No, everyone says it like the younger generation doesn't get hit, but like I, I'm high risk according to my doctor, so uh, it's yeah. not something I want to play a game with. You know, it's just not worth no, it. Because you hear the things too, like somebody gets it and then like their lungs are scarred and they're worse off, and you have other underlying conditions that just make you further debilitated. So, yeah, and that's they're just figuring this stuff out now because people have yeah. only now been recovered for three or four months and they're still having yeah. complications. Yeah, yeah. It's not worth the risk. No. Better be safe. Better be safe than sorry. Yep. Well, take care of yourself, guys. Enjoy your day Thank tomorrow. You. Give your mother my regards. Hope every, uh, Thanks, brother. everything's good. Take it easy. You too. Bye-bye. All right, guys. Uh, let's get back to the questions here. We got. I'm sure we got a bunch. Sorry about that. Um, let's go here. What we got on TikTok? What's that? Um, she Warren says, well, he didn't say yet. Okay. I missed a question. Okay. Let's see. I'm so curious about this. I don't know what it is. I've looked at your old stuff. I'm just not exactly, I'm not sure. Uh, so if you're curious about this, all the old content that I've got on TikTok, I try to give you guys like a step-by-step. -step. Um, we've got a really inclusive group on Facebook. Uh, it's called the Hive Mind. Uh, I'll put a link in the description of the live that I'm on now. Uh, but if you want, you can DM me on Instagram or on TikTok, and I'll try to get you that link so we can get you in. Uh, the best part about that group, guys, is it's it's a bunch of people that are going through the same journey at the same time. So everyone's willing to help answer questions, uh, tips and tricks, and uh, you know, kind of grow together. We're all in this together, guys. So uh, myself, my wife. We've got a couple of close friends, my sister, my, my uh, brother-in-law. There's a ton of people in that group that are willing to help. Let's see. What's the best EOYO? -Yo? I haven't used any other EOYOs -Yo other than the EOYO -Yo 3. Um, but I've heard good things about all of them. Um, there's a ton of old school scanners that use like the Nadamu. Um, I was a big KDC fan until mine started crapping out and I quickly became a uh, an EOYO -Yo fan and I am 
I no longer subscribe to the mentality of, you know, you get what you pay for because you don't. Uh, not in scanners. Not in scanners and not in books, apparently. Uh, where is your primary bread and butter for sourcing? Brendan? Being tricky. Uh, we like the Goodwill outlets. We like Goodwill. We like um, Habitat for Humanity. We like all the mom and pop thrift stores, especially the ones that like are brand new that just like crop up and you know, haven't been there yet. We found what did we find twenty books or fifteen books the other day at that one. We we came across a thrift store that was like half off the entire store is like a grand opening sale. They get books all the time. They said, um, but the quality of the books that were on the shelf it doesn't seem like anybody else is scanning so. Um, or not yet. Yeah, or not yet. So if you're in a rural area, check mom and pop stores, um, Goodwills, if they're not scanning, which most of them are now. Um, but they miss stuff, and they're not necessarily looking for the same stuff as we are, guys. So um, don't hesitate to go in and scan a Goodwill. Uh, if no scan bar or barcode and no ISBN, how do you find out if it's a good book or not? That's a great question, Mary Jarvis. So um, – what we do is we open up the Amazon seller app. Uh, we'll take that title page. We'll open up the camera function inside that app, and it scans it using Amazon's uh, like facial recognition type software. Uh, and then from there, you'll be able to find if there's a listing for that book. And if there's a listing, uh, then you can go to like act like you're going to list it and get the product details. And then once you get the ASIN, which is the number that Amazon uses to catalog the book on their site, then you can find the book that way. Um, can you break everything down uh, in one rough, quick summary? Uh, Daniela, let's see if we can do that. Um, so go to the thrift store. Go to Goodwill. Start even before that. Sign up for your Amazon account yep. and download a scanning app. Yep. Um, either Scoutly, Scout IQ. Um, like Scoutify is one. Scoutify. Download one of those because you're going to need the information that it gives you. Yep. Figure out what that information is. It's going to give you the sales rank, mm -hmm. the e score, which is the number of days with sales. And each and of those apps your, is going to be a little different. Yep. So, like Scoutly may not say days, it may not say e score, it'll say like days with sales or something like yeah. that. Yeah. We haven't used all of them, but, um, and then it'll give you your projected profit before you enter in a buy cost. I think they all have a spot for you to enter your buy cost. So you're going to go to thrift stores, Goodwills, anything like that, and you are going to scan every book you can come in contact with, everything. Don't miss anything. Don't skip it. It's not worth it. Um, and then when you take your books home, you're going to go ahead and list them. You're either going to list them using Amazon or a listing software like Exceller List. Um, and as you put them into a batch, you're either going to label the back of the book yourself or you're going to opt to have Amazon label it for you. And you'll build a box. We prefer to use the one box method, which is where you put books into the box as you list them until that box is full. We use 15 by 12 by 10 size boxes that you can get at Home Depot. They're the Home Depot extra small boxes. You can also get them at Walmart. Um, and then once that's done, you go into the Amazon app or the website and you enter in your box dimensions and weight and you pay for your shipping and print out your shipping, put it on the box and either take it to UPS or have them pick it up. Does that make sense? That's pretty much like Start the to basic steps. Yeah. Yep. There's going to be a little bit of nuances there, and you'll, you'll stumble when you're first getting started. But hopefully that helps, guys. Were you guys able to hear that over here on YouTube as well? What is the lowest profit you would pick up? Say an e-score of 151, profits $1.50. Would you pick that up? Yeah. Yeah. So if yeah. it's a max e-score of I mean, 151. I buy cost is under a dollar, so I would say right. probably – if the, if the buy cost for that is probably a small, thin, like soft cover book, if it's a 50 cents or um, something like that to pick it up, absolutely. We, we don't really go under a dollar. We would check Keepa, and this is where Keepa is really important. We would want to make sure that that book was selling consistently at the same price and not fluctuating, um, and that the buy box wasn't an anomaly. Right. Yeah, because don't forget, guys, you can list the book for whatever you want. 
So just because you've got it listed there doesn't mean it's profitable. Uh, FYI, on Scout IQ, you can change it to recognize the ISBN instead of the UPC. Yeah, absolutely. That's a good pro tip, Chase. Thanks for calling that out. Um, so when you're hit, instead of using your barcode scanner, if you're searching and you got to type in the ISBN, you don't feel like typing it in, you can actually go to where the ISBN is either on the back of the book or behind the title page, and then you can change it to, instead of read the barcode, it'll read the series of numbers that is the ISBN. So good call out, Chase. Thank you. Um, Opticon 2006 is expensive, uh, but it's about the same size as the key fob for my keys. So I keep it on my keys. That's a really smart idea. Um, I'm not sure what the Opticon runs. Uh, I know that it is a little... I think it's like, in the same price range as the PVC. Yeah, so probably in like $125 to $150 range. Um, maybe even more. So we paid in the $200 range for our PVC, I think $220. Yeah, we paid something like $180 or $200, yeah. But, okay. yeah, it, good call out. Well, if you can get one that fits on your key ring, then do that, and you'll never forget about it. I see a lot of people talking about uh, the ring one, too. That just seems like really awkward to me. I would never use a, the ring scanner, I don't think. But I think it's a lot of personal preference. It what is. You're Whatever with. you're comfortable with, for sure. So this question is from Omar, and it says, if I have to ship out 100 books, how do I split them up? So Amazon will usually tell you, where they have to go and you don't necessarily want to split them up you want them to go to one place okay. unless you have to um i'm not on uh hot spot over here but i was probably like 50 percent um so you definitely don't want to split them up if you don't have to but amazon will tell you where they want the books to go so and if you want to build in the cost of doing um placement yeah so if you're okay. tired of getting splits um, I recommend double checking to make sure you're not enrolled in their Head Start program. That fixed it for us. But uh, if you want the books to go to that fulfillment center that's 45 minutes down the road or a half a mile down the road, um, you can do inventory placement. And I want to say it's like 30 to 40 cents per unit. Um, and then it goes up if it's like a big book, like a coffee table book or a big thick textbook. But you can build that into your cost. So when you're scanning, you know that, hey, this is a fixed cost. It's going into the cost. I don't want to have to pay extra for it. So you can always do that, guys. Good call. What happened there? I'm not sure. No? Yeah, it'll fly now. Oh, okay. Yeah. So let's put it up for a vote. Let's see what's on the side. What do you guys think about this? So it's a good book. It's profitable, right? But... It's ranked 361, not 361,000, just 361. Ranked 361. So crazy, amazing ring. You guys think that'll flatten out? Pack it in the middle of a box? What do you guys think? Listed as acceptable? What do you guys think? I'm hesitant to list it. I think we pack it underneath some boxes or underneath some books and give it a couple days, and then if it does flatten out, then we list it. Okay. If it doesn't, I'll stick it on the shelf then. then we'll do it. Hey, can you put this on the shelf for me, please? She Warren wants well, to know I'll how do you know what to list the book for? So, um, we use Acceler List, and Acceler List tells you uh, what the buy box is. If you want, you can actually check Scout IQ or Keepa, and you can see like Keepa is the end all be all. It'll tell you what the sales history is. Um, it'll give you the information, so like you'll know that the book is listed. By other people, at like a hundred or seventy or fifty dollars, but Keepa says, "Hey, this book in used condition always sells at eighteen dollars. Maybe list it for nineteen, but you're probably going to get like fifteen to eighteen dollars on that." I hope that helps. Strictly books or magazines too? No, we are strictly books. Uh, with that said, like certain like uh, gaming guys. We sold guides, National Geographic ones. Yeah, we did sell one. I think it might have been a National Geographic like. Book no, type. It? I don't think it was a magazine. It was a magazine. Um, so check them then. I, I guess we sell stuff that I'm not even aware of. You get to touch so many books that it's like it's and hard it to keep like track. And it was like a year ago at least. Uh, stick it in the mattress for a few days. Good call. It's a good idea. Give it a shot, right? We'll see what happens. If it doesn't flatten out, I'm not going to sell it. Uh, no, not Excel like the computer program. Uh, Excel as in like you're trying to Excel faster, right? So. Excel ER list, um, dot com. I have a link 
it's broken. Um, but I'll put the website itself in the description of the YouTube. Uh, here's another question. Uh, what is your routine? Scout on Monday, clean up and ship on Tuesday, etc. No. So typically what we'll do is we'll source um, Monday through Saturday or Monday through Friday, and then we'll take the weekend and we'll list the books then. Um, this is an anomaly week. We take the week off um, from sourcing to handle stuff around the house, get it straightened up, kind of clean up the property a little bit, make sure the lawn was mowed, um, clean out the back room. We had about 3,000 dud books back there that were just kind of sitting around, so we got rid of those. Um, but then we'll list you know, what we have and get it out as soon as possible, uh, and then we'll, we'll buy more books. You don't want to get to the point where, like, you know, you're sourcing all the time and you're getting all these books and then you have so many books taking over your life. You never get a chance to get them out of the house. You know, work-life balance is one of the hardest things we're trying to figure out right now. Uh, let's see if I can scroll through and get a question from TikTok. Yeah, Mary, you are absolutely 100% right. So Mary Mary Jarvis, 143, on TikTok just said a lot of people miss children's books. And I've got a couple of good videos on TikTok about the children's books. But, yes, check children's books. You're going to find homeschool books in there. You're going to find handwriting help books. Um, Pop-up books. Pop-up books. every single time. Man, you'd be surprised how many kids' books we've found. Uh, that are twenty and thirty dollar profit books, and they're just like itty bitty. They're like itty bitty books. They're like this big, right? But there's so much money. So don't sleep on kids' books, guys, or cookbooks. The specialty cookbooks, especially like paleo or keto, uh, or we found uh, didn't even have a barcode Chocolate on the back. Lovers. Chocolate lovers. There was an Italian cookbook that was like all about like rustic Italian recipes from Italy. Um, so just scan everything. It just goes to show you, you'll always be surprised what you find. Um, Daniela says, I appreciate you guys. I love what you guys are doing. Keep helping people. May God bless your family. Uh, you know, what? we're doing our best. We just think that a lot of people need this help uh, right now, and it makes a lot of sense to give it out if you can, because if you're in a position to help, I think you have the responsibility to help. And, um, you know, we like to make deposits in what we call the karma bank. So... Um, we make deposits and deposit and deposit, and then eventually, if we need a withdrawal, we have a balance there, right? So, in theory, it works. Uh, I had a set of books that was not approved and now rejected. So that happens. Uh, Mary, we find that we have books that we're, like, not restricted in, and occasionally Amazon changes something, and then by the time it gets there and goes active, they were restricted, and then now it's stranded. Uh, but, once again, great selfless plug for... Um, Reezy.biz, um, he splits everything 51 49, so you get the lion's share, um, even if it is only an extra percent. But he sells all your restricted, and then he'll take DVDs and everything as well, too. So, uh, check it out, Reezy.biz. I'll put a link in the bottom if you guys want. Use me as a reference, I do get a small kickback on that, so that would really help. That if you don't want to do that, and you don't want to, you know, go to Reezy.biz because of the kickback. Check out Romer's. It's restrictedinventory.com. I don't get a kickback there. He I splits it with you 50-50. And I think he does DVDs and CDs, too. Uh, Bible books are hot. Pedro, you got a good point, man. Bibles. Bibles. You know, the reason they say the Bibles is like the no, most widely no, sold book in the world is because it is. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of different variations of it. There are study Bibles. There's devotionals. Um, NIV is a good Bible um, that's the yeah, black and blue oh, one that we sold. Yeah, a lot of the study is Bibles, Bible? that is a Bible, it is a 5 million rank. So it's not the, the 5 million Bible. rank, but uh, study Bible. A lot of times you're going to find study Bibles in the box. A lot of times you're going to find them in the box that are in, like, great condition. But keep an eye out for leather-bound Bibles, the ones that are, like, leather-bound, like, really nice and fancy. Um, the solid cover mm -hmm. are... Probably what we've found to be, um, I don't want to say the most profitable. They're just the most frequently found in yeah. Amazon's database. A lot of the fancy covers are not yet there. Um, and we don't want to mess with trying to create our own listings. So we just 
don't buy those. I would be maybe leaving money on the table, but time is money as well. So Yeah. Um, so Brendan Wilson, again, has a good call out uh, and says you can create custom maps on Google. So before you go sourcing, I create a custom map on Google with thrift stores on it and then add locations uh, in the order of the locations I want to visit. Great call out. You want to definitely make sure you have like an efficient route. Um, that way you know like what days you can go to certain thrift stores and when they're restocking the books. And that just ties into like it's all about relationships. Uh -huh. um, dude, religious books have been pulling in money. Yeah, tell me about it, especially when the pandemic started. Um, it was like apocalyptic books and the end of times books that like, you know, some crazy, crazy value in Bibles, religion, self-help. Um, anything that's going to teach you something, really, anything that'll teach you something, you'll, you you'll make some money on it. Um, Eyes of Shadows or whatever it yeah. was? Uh, no, I did not. Um, it's somewhere here. I have over 300 children's books. Scan them. Scan them. You probably got a ton of money. And most people, this is a good thing, good, good segue. I like this. Uh, Renita, thank you for that. If you guys are struggling to find the money to start this the way that you really want to, Shop your house. Plain and simple. Set Ask up the Amazon account. Family. Set up the Put out ads. Yeah. yeah. Set up the uh, Amazon account. Get Scout IQ, and immediately shop your house. Get with friends and family. Anybody that maybe graduated school or friends that graduated school that you know they don't use their textbooks anymore, um, and see if you can get them. And then sell them merchant fulfilled if you have to, so you don't have any fees. And then once you get a couple sales under your belt, merchant fulfilled. Then you start doing FBA uh, and you use that money to just snowball and reinvest and reinvest and reinvest. And before you know, it, you got a nice little nest egg of money and you can start throwing money at the business. Um, on average, on average, what do you think you guys make on 40 hours of work? So we don't, we don't think of our time as, you know, what we make per hour. Um, we'd rather think of it like, the number of books you have to sell and I think once you start breaking away and this is just my personal take on this but if once you start breaking away with from what like what do I make per hour by doing all this to if I want more money sell more books then you start to find the creative ways of like how can I get more books for free or cheap who has books where can I get books what businesses do I know that have books and then you start tying it into your conversations because realistically um, you're not making money while you're looking for books. You're making money on the books that you've already listed that are for sale and active at Amazon. Um, and we run a very consistent 45% profit margin. Um, you know, so if you're doing a thousand dollars in sales, you know, 45% of that is yours. And you got taxes and stuff like that, but um, you could easily make a hundred to hundred and fifty dollars selling one textbook. Um, you know, whereas if you're working a nine to five you know, ten, fifteen, twenty dollars an hour. I don't know, you know, what you're making, but most of us were making like probably nine to fifteen dollars an hour. I would say the, the vast majority of people. So try to change your mindset, flip that a little bit. Um, but it's a good question. I mean, we work a lot of hours. We're just trying to grow the business right now, so we don't have to put that time in. Uh, what is your process? Uh, for using a sell back your books. I don't use sell back your books. I don't use any kind of book buyback company. Uh, it's a great place to get rid of books. Um, however, uh, we did have a pretty bad taste in our mouth for the longest time with book buyback companies. Uh, we were using Book Scouter for the longest time to get rid of our restricted inventory. Um, of course, you didn't have any consignment services like Avery, Rum of the Roamer, or Reezy Resales has. Uh, so instead, you would have to find more creative ways to get rid of them. Well, some of these companies out there will get your books, and then they'll review your books, right? And then they'll be like, oh, yeah, well, um, these books are counterfeit, or these books are damaged, or we can't accept these books, but you can pay to have them sent back to you. It's like, I don't want to pay to have my inventory sent back to me. Um, but I did that because I had like $300 in book buyback money that was supposed to be coming to me, and they said all the books were counterfeit. We ended up getting rid of them another way through another, I think, another buyback company that didn't give us any issues. Um, but, like, just be careful who you work with. I think, like, Textbook Run 
or Books Run. I forget which one it is, but like one of those guys uh, is the one that we had a bad taste in our mouth. But like sellbackyourbook.com is pretty good. Um, I think, is it Textbook Rush? I don't know. Go to Book Scouter. There's like 10 or 20 of them. Um, stay, it's either a Textbook Rush or Books Run that you want to stay away from. But Sell Back Your Book is great. Buyback Bill is awesome. Uh, a lot of bulk the sellers will deal with buyback bill and sell back your book. Um, let's see. Uh, so if I was talking with them, they, they get rid of stock within four-week interval, uh, and they base the time they get things in based on color of the tags. Yeah, um, you, you sound like you're talking about a Goodwill. Um, they get their books all the time. The Goodwills buy us. They scan but they miss stuff. So they do switch out the books in intervals and they change the color. That's why they get those like half off sales of Goodwills uh, based on color of the sticker. Um, but you can't really trust that because I, I have a sneaky suspicion that like when they're scanning and going through the books, they're putting a color sticker on there for that day. Uh, and it, that book may not actually make it to the floor for a couple days or a week. So it could be a mismatched sticker. We've had plenty of times where we've shopped in the Goodwill uh, and we found books that have like an orange sticker, and orange was the day, uh, but it was clearly a brand new book that like never put out like a week ago, right? So um, you do find stuff that you normally don't think you'd find. Rock in the Pond, book found today, only three E score, listed for $900 range. Thoughts, uh, Luis? I'm. I, I hate to speculate. You got to check Keepa though, because you can list the book for whatever you want. Um, if it sells, hey, it, it does happen. You do find books that sell for that kind of money. Oh, the shit you don't know. Look at this, guys. Oh, the shit you don't know. By Antonio Carter. Is this profitable, babe? It is, yes. Oh, the shit you don't know. Interesting. We'll sell it. Yeah, we'll sell it for sure. Uh, let's see. Do you need Scott IQ and Excel list, or do you do everything through Amazon apps? Uh, no, I don't really use the Amazon seller app to go sourcing like that. I'll use it as like a backup to check. You have to, there's a lot of information, and it gives it to you, uh, but you have to know how to interpret it. Scout IQ really gives it to you in a digestible format. It tells you what your potential profit is. It calculates all the fees for you, uh, which you can do in the seller app. Um, it doesn't tell you what e-score is, so you have no idea of like how many times the book has sold in the last six months. So that's really helpful with Scout IQ. Um, also, it doesn't tell you like where the buy box actually is. Like, it'll tell you like low. Look at first glance, it'll tell you like offers from four dollars and the buy box might be at 35 dollars so keep that in mind uh let's see mark welcome you're a little late but better late than never just in case i proved it you are here there you go <laughs> uh what's the process for using sell back your books uh i think when you do sell back your book uh, go to like sellbackyourbook.com. You go to that website and you can create a shipment that way. Uh, you want to be careful though because the quote that they give you uh, at sellbackyourbook.com, um, it could change. It's, so it's like it might offer you like the condition. they might offer you three dollars for that book, and then by the time it gets there and they check it, if it doesn't match the condition or too much time has passed, then that quote could change, and most likely will. Uh, Renita, read my other post. I did. I got you, Renita, uh, about the children's books. Potty books. I've been skipping the, the like the bathroom readers. Is that what you're talking about? Or potty training. Or you're talking about potty training. Because potty training books, I, I would imagine, do well because the, they teach you how to potty train. The bathroom humor books and whatever. And I found a couple. But not but like many. Uncle Buck's bathroom yeah, readers. I like, ones, see them all over the place. Was, Oh, here, why don't you do this? Well, what am I doing? Things, the tabs. Okay, sure. One of my, my favorite part of this job is, guys, taking these 
millions of stickers out of books. We pay one of our kids so I think, five cents a book to take off all the stickers. Tell me what you guys think. I think that if you're a student and you have 30 to 50 post-its, you have all these different arrows, and you have all the writing in the margins. Be quiet. I think you're probably not a good student. Or maybe you're an excellent student, and just because you don't learn that way doesn't mean shit. I guess. Probably gonna get some hate you're for this. You're being super judgmental. Right I'm now. not being judgmental. I'm just saying, like, he's I, just bitching because he doesn't want to take the damn stickers and the post-it notes out. He's not really. Pretty much. Um, there you go. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, All right, guys, we're gonna wrap this up here soon. You guys have time for a few more questions, though. Mark, you just got home from work? Yes, we are. Look, ship sailing in the night. Did you see Kathy recently, or are you guys still doing opposite schedules? I think she said they were back on opposite schedules. What books do you skip? Babe, what books do we skip? Um, we try not to skip anything. If we're in a hurry, we occasionally skip the mass media little pocket size ones, although we have found some that are definitely profitable. Um, we try not to skip anything though. Yeah. Our rule of thumb is scan everything. Even though we know like there are some books we just automatically skip over, like the South Beach Diet books. There's a few other ones. South Beach Diet um, for sure, we don't touch. Good to great, we don't touch, unless it's like brand new. Uh, there are but some it's, it's other very rarely books this, that we see. Yeah. The Great controversy, or what is that? What it oh, is? Oh yeah, where it's like the black cover with like space on it. Yeah. No, the one with the. The great controversy. On it. Yeah. We don't. We don't. We try to skip a lot of stuff. You, you scan everything. Like I've even, like we used to not build sets. Like if we had the set, we found it great, but we wouldn't like buy a Harry Potter books and wait till we accumulated a set. And here recently, we've started to change our business model again and involved with the marketplace. And now we build sets. So. Um, Bad Kitty, we're, we're one book down from having a set of that. I've got enough almost for like two or three different Harry Potter sets. Um, just start acquiring. Um, don't you don't judge space, a book by its cover. Oh, yeah. But if you've got the space and the ability to set them aside to work towards building sets, it can definitely be worth it. Sets can definitely sell for more than the individual books. Um, Absolutely. So she Warren, no, you don't need an LLC. Um, eventually, you're going to want to set up a formal business if you do start to do the sales where you're doing twenty to fifty thousand dollars a year in sales or more. Um, it definitely helps as far as tax purposes go. Um, consult a CPA. I can't give you tax advice, uh, but that's more for like your personal preference. You can actually do it as a sole proprietorship, just using your personal information. You may not want to do that because now, starting on September first, Amazon now shows. Um, the information, like the address attached to your store publicly, you can always use but you can PO change box. that or a P.O. box can fix that problem. Omar, uh, great question. How do I make sure that I don't go over 50 pounds when shipping to Amazon? Um, have to list about 200 pounds worth of books um, and ship them out. So great way to do that. We recommend using extra small boxes from Home Depot or the small boxes that are at Home Depot or that at Walmart. Uh, those box measurements are 15 by 12 by 10. And the reason we do that uh, is because those boxes are small enough to where it's almost impossible to be over 50 pounds when you fill it up. And we like to use the one box method because not only does it seem to make things go a little more quickly, you already yeah. know everything's fitting neatly into the box, but also you don't have to do box contents, which is time consuming and can be very frustrating. Yeah, it could definitely be frustrating for sure. You're right. The Hunger Games books, um, we typically try to avoid those. There are the occasions, though, where like certain versions of the Hunger Games series um, is good. Oh, that's what, I think that's what Mark was talking about. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, the, the set used to be really good and didn't matter, but like there are certain editions now where I think it's still good. But like we try to stay away from the, the Fifty Shades of Grey series. <laughs> Because they're never worth anything. Um, certain Harry Potter books aren't really worth anything. Most of them, if you're building a set, though, it's worth a different look. Um, so, Mark, you said you get the the Lowe's boxes that are 16 by 12 by 12. That's very similar dimensions. 
I would imagine it gives you the same outcome. It's a little you, bit bigger. Do I you find do you find yourself going over? If you're getting close or go over 50 pounds at all, because you don't want that additional fee. And to give you guys a heads up, I'm showing the questions on the YouTube uh, as they come in, so you guys can watch this again later on, um, and you can see the questions to get a better understanding of what we're talking about. So anybody that's on TikTok that hasn't made it over to YouTube, feel free to check out the live. Uh, it'll be saved. You guys can review it later to get the, the question help that you guys need. Um, so Mary Jarvis143 says, uh, so Goodwill had the four books of Harry Potter um, that had hard shell uh, that held them for all $9. They're all for nine dollars. Four is probably not the complete. Yeah, no, there there's three or four yeah. listings on Amazon for the Harry Potter box set. There's one I think that's like uh, books one through five. Then there's one through six and one through seven. Um, they all have different values, and then you want to be careful too, uh, and make sure okay. that there because there's an artwork for the original form of the Harry Potter series. There's a special edition as well, and those carry their own value. So you want to make sure that if you do try to build a set. You're building the right set, and you don't mix match like a book from the special edition with a regular edition. They may look the same, but you'd be cutting your own profit out. Mix and match? Yeah. No, if you're mixing and matching, it's different. We'll just have to agree to disagree. It's not a mismatch. It depends on the context. Drop in the comments, guys. My wife likes to give me hell about my grammar. She's a grammar Nazi. I'm not. Canceled. <laughs> that couch is calling your name. That's here. fine. I won't be kicked. Michelle. Michelle says that's the same size I use, 16 by 12 by 12. It would be possible, but you would really have to stuff it. That's good to know. So if you guys can't find the books that we use, which are the extra small from Home Depot or the 15 by 12 by 10 at Walmart, Lowe's also has a box that's comparable, uh, 16 by 12 by 12. Uh, and you'd have to pack the box pretty tight to go over, apparently. Um, Mark, yeah, so you're right around 40 pounds usually. Scale's about three ounces off. We're still using a baby scale, so, like, we don't have, like, a... We haven't spent money on a scale yet. We're still using that. So. If it works, if it works don't change it, right? Uh, why does Amazon ask if a book is collectible? So... This might be good for some of you guys that have been asking about books that have autographs. Uh, if it's collectible, uh, hold on a second. What do their specific there we go. say about Focus. collectible books? I don't uh, know. If it's collectible uh, and it has an autograph or it has some kind of like first edition or something that's really, really obscure, you may want to list it as collectible. If it's a run-of-the-mill book that's like a fifth printing or a 16th edition or something like that, it's not collectible. What are the condition notes for right. collectible state? Let's you know? go back to the condition notes. Let's find that I'm out. Curious. I do not know. I've, we've never listed anything in collectible condition. There we go. Let's see. So we're going to scroll through the condition notes. Collectible. So according to Amazon, uh, to be listed in collectible condition, uh, it says first editions, first printings, signed, inscribed, scarce copies, advanced reading copies, and uncorrected proofs, or out of print books. So books that aren't being printed. So, wait a second. Can we touch on that? It says advanced reading copies and uncorrected proofs. So right. they have their own section. That's good to know because Amazon. And that's new has, because they didn't have that before. Okay. Amazon has told me verbally on two occasions that you can list those. And we've always decided to err on the side of caution mm -hmm. and not list them anyway. But I feel a lot more confident listing yeah. them, and I come upon them so frequently. Our One of our Goodwills that we shop at regularly has an entire section just for them. It, well, it does go on further to say this. Collectible books do not include the following. Uncorrected proofs of in-print or not yet published books. So Okay. So it's very specific. It also doesn't include former library books, remaindered books, like the books that you yep. would get at like Ollie's with the black marking, uh, or book club editions. But then there's also separate standards on the same link for the condition notes, guys, um, that explain like new, very good, good, and acceptable collectible conditions. So you may want to check those guys 
But I'll check that out when you guys get a chance. Yeah. It's definitely good to know the condition notes because we haven't listed anything as collectible. I did not know, although I should have. Yeah, for um, sure. And now I do. Well, that's a learning. Absolutely. We're we learn still as learning we go. all the time. But if you don't know the answer, at least try to know where to find the information. Uh, can you post the info of the conditions of the books? Uh, absolutely. It's actually, I shared my screen on the YouTube live, so it'll be there as well. Feel free to go back uh, and watch the YouTube video again. Uh, but I will post a link in the Facebook group uh, that'll take you directly to this if you don't feel like searching through the video as well. I hope that helps. A uh, couple more questions, guys, then we're going to wrap it up. It's getting a little late, and I'm sure my wife would like some extra help. We don't want to be up super late, right? Uh, Mariah Babe One, can you post the info? Absolutely, I'll post that info uh, in the Facebook group. So if you guys aren't, uh, join the Facebook group. It's the Hive Mind Bookseller Group. Uh, if you are having a hard time finding it, shoot me a DM either on TikTok or Instagram. Uh, I prefer my DMs on Instagram. I get the notification when I get them. I can get back to you a lot faster. Uh, with TikTok, um, they don't give you that notification unless you go into the app. And even then, it's like a little like number on the top right. So, uh, also for anybody that has sent me a DM uh, on Facebook, and we are not Facebook friends, I just like three days ago found out that there's like a separate section for messages from people you don't know. So I apologize, but my wife taught me that. Uh, Joseph Hackworth, how do you create a bundle? So, I don't create bundles. Steph, you know how to create a bundle. It's a learning experience. We can look it up, and we'll get back to you. Uh, we don't have that information. As in like, are you talking about like bundling a book and a Scotty Peeler, or like multiple books that aren't like together? Because if that's the case, you can go into your inventory, uh, and usually you can create like a sale. You might be able to do it there. But I'll try to get the information for you, and I'll post it when I figure that out. Um, you could always, if you want a faster answer. Um, you could always contact Seller Central and see if you can ask them, and maybe they'll be able seller to, support. or seller support, maybe they'll be able to fill you in. Uh, YouTube link, people, please. Uh, City Charm, there's a link to my YouTube in my profile here on TikTok uh, and on YouTube. Uh, click on the link that's at the very bottom of my profile, and it takes you right there. It also has the link for Scout IQ and everything else. Uh, like a series such as Harry Potter series. Oh, so okay. that's not really a bundle then. So you're yeah. selling that a set. a set. So you're listing them under the box set ASIM. So the or first that thing listing. you want to do is identify the exact set that you have. Mm -hmm. um, and then you'll get the ASIM for that. Assuming that you don't have the um, box that typically goes around it. And we put them in a poly mailer. Both that if not, we get a clean brand new box that has no markings on it. And we label that as set, you know, do not separate and ready to ship, um, as well as you put the barcode on the outside of the poly mailer or the outside of the box. But you want to make sure you're not having any other barcodes exposed when you do that. Were you able to hear that? Did that help? How did you get rid of markers on the side of the book on the pages? So those are... Um, uh, remainder marks. Those are remainder marks. So usually like stores like Ollie will have those. You have to downgrade the condition. I don't think that you can get rid of them because the marker will bleed into the page too much. You can try a sanding block. I don't think that that's possible though because it, it, it leaches into the page. So just downgrade the condition and you'll be fine. Uh, a lot of you guys are probably worried too that if you list a book in acceptable condition that it might take longer to sell. We haven't found that to be the case because we were operating under the same mindset. We would scale everything. So, like, everything would be very good or good or acceptable if it actually was. Um, and then we just started listing everything that's good because we realized it didn't really change how long it takes to sell. But uh, it's coming up on a little more than an hour and a half. So, um, I wanted to appreciate you guys and thank you guys for stopping by for the live. Um, we're going to do this again next Saturday. So as we did last week, every Saturday, uh, 10 p.m. Central, 11 Eastern, uh, we're going to do a live Q&A session. Um, I'm going to continue to mess around with the, the platform a little bit, see if I can 
uh, add some tweaks, make it look a little bit better for you. I'd love to start having some more people featured as well, um, do some interviews. So feel free to join the Facebook group, guys. Um, drop a comment here and let me know what you guys want to see. Um, and I look forward to talking to you guys soon. You got anything you want to add, babe? No, no. Take it easy, guys. Thanks again. Appreciate you guys stopping by. I think I'm going to put a